Okay, Charlie Rao, it's so nice to finally meet you actually in person, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for making the call and, and getting in touch and, and for having me be part of the festival. This is really awesome. Oh my God, it's so totally our pleasure. Uh, your work is so good. So what I was kind of hoping for was to just hear a little bit from you about what the process has been like on your end from getting that first email with the, you know, question if you're interested all the way up to getting that first prompt. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I was definitely immediately interested. Uh, and I, I love collaborating with, uh, non-musical artists. Uh, I, I sort of have a background with that. Uh, I work a lot with poets and, uh, and painters and dancers uh, and uh, have uh, composed and recorded music uh, for sort of multimedia projects with all three of those disciplines. Um, so it's, uh, I really loved the idea that was presented and the way it was prompted of there's a painting uh, that Lisa did that I'm supposed to create music uh, based off of, and then she would make a new painting off the music. I thought it was a really cool idea and, and an original take, uh, you know, to get um, more raw expression from two people that don't have the ability to really be in contact with each other. I thought it was a really cool idea and very inspiring, especially because Lisa's work is so inspiring. So off the bat, you know, the proposition is to collaborate with someone you're not going to meet in person. Um, right. I, I don't know. Usually when, when you collaborate or you take a source to draw inspiration from, uh, is there more face-to-face -face contact involved in this? Like, does, is, does this offer any unique challenges or considerations? Uh, I think what the, the unique challenge, and, and definitely not in a negative way, uh, I think there was a lot of positive outcome from it, but the challenge was not being able to have uh, that much correspondence. It, it was only about the art and nothing else, like very little interpersonal exchange. Even though we're not going to meet each other, uh, it's still, um, I guess maybe the way I chose to approach it, because I could have pursued that and I didn't. I, I could have... I did, uh, when I got in touch with Lisa, we exchanged websites and we went to each other's websites, but I didn't pursue trying to get to know her before I made the music. Uh, and I didn't really think about that on purpose. It wasn't intentional to do it that way. It's more when I was looking at her website uh, and uh, I really liked uh, her art. Um, then I, I looked at the painting that she sent uh, I just got an idea really fast and I wanted to roll with it. Whereas I guess the, um, the challenge would have been if I didn't get an idea fast, what, what is the idea going to be? What's the music? Is the music going to be based off of, uh, what the artist's intent is or just what the visual reaction is? And I feel like the way I make music is so based on intention, uh, and, uh, typically when I collaborate with somebody, it's, I need to know a lot about why they're doing it. Uh, and what they do is defined by who they are. Um, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this was kind of interesting because I would have considered that a challenge, but now that I'm talking to you about it and I hadn't, you know, saying it out loud makes me realize I would have considered that a challenge, but for whatever reason, I didn't even think about that. Uh, which is interesting. Um, so, I mean, I think being in this context of the quarantine and the lockdown, uh, just the, the ways into creativity have, this is a good example of how things have just been different than they've ever been, uh, for me personally, anyway. There is um, kind of an immediacy going on right now, especially when you're in your place all day, every day. You know, a day can feel like a week sometimes, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I know from my own artistic practice, collaborations can sometimes just become this thing that's long and drawn out and overwrought and overconsidered. And yeah, certainly coming into this process, you know, I said to everyone right off the bat, I'm like, we're looking at like a two to three week turnaround here. Like, yeah, do something that's relevant now and that's spry and, you know, you're following your gut instinct. 
and I know I was blown away by how quickly you responded to that first prompt. Like it was so quick and so good. <laughs> it was just amazing. So well, I, go ahead. Oh, oh I was going to say, I, I, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the way it was presented to me. Uh, like I thought the idea was really cool that I was going to react to uh, like I, I had already said this before, but um, reacting to a painting with the knowledge that a new painting would be made from that reaction, that I found really interesting. But also the painting, uh, the first painting, um, just was really compelling to me. And I, I think the thing that I was most uh, concerned about when I got the prompt was I didn't want to create uh, a piece of music based off projection. I didn't want it to be about uh, you know, what do I feel like writing music about right now? And let me just say that it's part of this project. I didn't want to phone it in. And I was, at first, I was just really self-conscious about that and just, you know, did not want that to happen. And, but that was just when I was kind of like going back and forth about the prompt, about you, you know, saying what it was going to be. But then when I saw the painting, that wasn't the case at all. And I really did honestly and deeply get the idea for that music from that painting very very quickly um so it was it was cool that process a bit because you know i've listened to your other music and i can see how you draw your music from inspiration how how does that work like you look at that painting and then what happens next uh well i with with this particular case uh a lot of the music I write is based off of literature, uh, either poetry or novels. Um, so I'm used to being inspired by, like I said before, non-musical inspiration uh, way more than I, like my music is very much influenced by non-musical influences more so than musical influences. And the way I play, the way I write, the way I improvise all of it. Um, so that part, I think for whatever reason, is just a lot more comfortable. The idea of being inspired by a painting, for instance, and that wasn't a big hurdle for me uh, in the way that I guess it could be for a musician that's uh, drawing most of their influence from other musical uh, influences. Um, so off the bat, that wasn't, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's, it would be difficult for most musicians. I think most musicians would rise to it, but. Uh, it, I guess it just felt a little more natural of an idea. Um, but the process of creating the music was more uh, just looking at the painting and uh, I, I was focusing on the subject matter of, of the woman sitting at the table uh, alone and sort of staring off. Um, and I was just thinking about that. And I don't know if, if Lisa chose the painting for this reason, but to me, it, it really did seem like, uh, not, I, I didn't see it as a dark or you know sad or depressing painting, but it did have some weight to it. Uh, you know, the, the woman in the painting looks, uh, you know, like she's, she's thinking, she's contemplating, and she, above all, she looks like she's feeling. It's not a neutral, uh, it, there's not a neutral mood to the painting. So the music couldn't feel neutral. It had to have weight. Um, but like I said, it didn't feel uh, like the music should be sad or angry or it, it felt like there needed to be emotional weight to it that wasn't neutral, but that had the subtlety that the painting did. So I was just thinking about that and and holding my guitar and uh, the way I usually write uh, is in a burst. So uh, like if I, if I get an idea, usually the whole thing comes pretty quickly within about 10 minutes. So that's what happened with the reason why I wrote it so fast was uh, usually when I come up with an idea, that's it all just kind of comes out at once. Um, so, so with that one, that's how it came out. And, and I chose the name uh, Risergam um, uh, after the Latin term, uh, I shall rise again. Uh, because that's sort of the, uh, I feel like that does have a, a weight to it, the idea of that, um, or the weight of that idea being hopeful, but also, you know, carrying the intensity and, and the melancholy and the sadness of there needs to be a reason to rise again. Uh, there needs to be a reason to have that hope. And it's because there's, 
you know, there's things happening. There's, there is bad things happening. There's dark things happening, but it's not going to be the end. It's, it's only part of it. And I feel like that painting evoked that feeling for me, uh, that it's somebody waiting, maybe not necessarily waiting patiently, but waiting and not without hope. I know that Lisa has talked about, you know, the times we're living in being reflected in the work, uh, you know, that painting, the, the prompt painting being kind of relevant and something that people might relate to right now of someone sitting waiting indoors. Would yeah. you say that the times we're living in right now, are they an influence as well in the music that you created or were you kind of operating from more of like a timeless, ethereal kind of space or abstract space or what do you think? Uh, I think maybe a little bit of both. Um, uh, I'm definitely, uh, I'm very affected in the way that I'm making music by what's happening around me in New York City and what's happening in the world. Um, but more so in a way that it's pointing me to inspirations. It's, it's been uh, directing me towards various authors that I've been taking a lot of inspiration from. Um, and uh, you know, directed me to finding you and in, in the the festival and and your prompt. Um, so it's been more of a sort of a like a weather vane, I guess, uh, of what's going on, just pointing me to different inspirations. And then the final painting, the uh, the one that Lisa created in response to your music. Any big surprises when you saw that, or what was your response when you first laid eyes on it? Uh, I I think it's amazing. Uh, I think it it really captures every. I, I mean, I I think it's perfect. Uh, it, it captures everything about the music that I would. I mean, I it's. It, it I, I'm not really sure how to articulate it because I'm not a visual artist at all. Uh, so I can't say like, oh, it's exactly what I would do because I wouldn't do anything because I don't do that. <laughs> but uh, when I saw it, it it does pair so well with the music. I think it's it's perfect, and I love it. Yeah, I love it too. I love both of it, I, both the song and both paintings. I just think the entire thing is is really really excellent and resonant. You know, I look at it and I think, hey, this is something that to me really represents the times that we're in. Um, and internationally, you know, is yeah. that interesting that in two very different parts of the world, there would be such a common language between artists. Yeah, absolutely. Or not, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, amazing to hear from you. And thank you again so much for the work that you have done on, on this project. It's, it's really remarkable. Thank you so much. It's been a, a real pleasure. I'm so happy to be part of it. Yeah. I can't wait to hit New York. You can show me around sometime. Oh, totally. Anytime. <laughs> cool.